Hey guys, today I would like to talk to you about something that has been on my mind for quite a while. And in fact, when I was in Sweden, this is something that Richard Perkins and I were discussing uh, just kind of when we're hanging out and spending time together is a, th a topic that came up. And I've decided to make this into a question for you to ask yourself. And the question is, what is the best type of farm for you? And there's sort of a formula I want to go through this for you to figure this out for yourself. So pick a sector, pick a career. This could be applied to any type of career or any type of farm. And really what it comes down to is identifying the key things that need to be done on that farm day in and day out. There's lots of things on any type of operation that need to be done day in and day out. But really what you should pick are the most mundane and repetitive things that need to be done all the time. That could be a list of 10 or it could be a list of 20. Put that list together. And so what's, what's, what's required here is you need to have a, a certain level of understanding of a particular trade, farm, or job so that you know what is involved in the day in and day out. Don't pick the sexy stuff. Don't pick, uh, if you're thinking about market gardening, don't pick things like running the jang cedar or plant, uh, running the paper pot transplanter. Pick the things that need to be done day in and day out. Bagging greens, washing vegetables, delivering, harvesting, pick, uh, you know, clean up, washing totes, things like this. Pick, pick the things that, that are, uh, are not the sexy things, but they're the things that have to be done, right? They're the, they're the, regardless of how you run your farm, these things have to be done. Now, make a cohesive list of all these tasks and then ask yourself, is this the type of day that I want to have day in and day out? Is this what I would want my day to look like? And if your answer is yes, I'm prepared to live that way, I think that would be fine. I don't mind doing these types of things day in and day out. Hey, maybe these things excite me, then there you go. That is something that you should look at. That's something that you might want to consider doing yourself. But once you go through that list and you go, I mean, the day in and day out, it's a bit of a grind on this. I don't really want to be shoveling manure day in and day out, whatever the task is, then don't pick that career. Don't pick that job. Don't pick that uh, trade or that type of farming. Pick something that you can imagine doing day in and day out. That's the most important aspect of this because sure we like the limelight and for a market garden that might be standing at the farmer's market on a Saturday. We might enjoy doing that. That's fun. It's social. You get a lot of uh, social gratification from people which is nice but are you prepared to do the things day in and day out that have to be done to run that farm? And you might not be but you might be too. So it's important to go through that list and you know, sometimes for some people, you might not figure those things out right away because you know, even with the 600 or so videos I have on my YouTube channel, I don't make videos of all the really boring, mundane things that need to be done. You know, like one on a market garden that's done all the time that isn't interesting at all is washing totes, is standing in the post harvest area, blasting off totes and washing totes. It's like doing dishes. It's not interesting, it's not fun, and sometimes it takes an hour or so to do. Or, you know, washing microgreen flats day in and day out. You know, these aren't fun and sexy tasks, but they have to be done to run the farm. So, ask yourself, are you willing to do those things? Now, pulling the lens back a little bit, if you think about an operation, it's okay in the grand scheme of things, as you grow, as you want to create systems to expand, free yourself up with a bit of time, the most mundane things are the first things you're going to delegate, right? If you're um, going to hire somebody and you don't want to train them fully yet, you want to kind of spread out their training and that would make sense as an employer. You don't have time to just drop everything and show a person all the detailed the detail oriented tasks on a farm, you go, okay, well today we're gonna wash totes. Tomorrow we're gonna wash flats. Uh, the next day we're gonna bag greens. You know, you're gonna go at the sort of hierarchy of tasks and hit the bottom ones first because they're the easiest to train, the easiest to get a person working and figure out if you like working with them or they're gonna work out or not. So that's another way of thinking about it too, is that perhaps the most boring things, if, uh, if, you have to, if they have to be done, 
and you have to do them, well, in time you can delegate those things out and that's okay. So that's some food for thought for you guys. I hope you have found that helpful. If you have and you don't subscribe to my channel, please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Hit the little notification bell next to the subscribe button and like the videos. Please give me a thumbs up. It really helps in the analytics so more people see these videos and share them with your friends if you think they're valuable. All right, guys. Take care. Talk to you later.